My guest on Face to Face today is Marik Kofi Gan, aka Kofi Ghana. You're welcome to Thank Face you. to Face. Thank you, Marik. I was concerned about your name though. How is it pronounced? Marike, like in like the no, makeup it's people. It's actually Marik. So just Marik. Just Marik. And then Kofi is Kofi is Kofi. Kofi is Kofi, which I love, by the way. Okay, you love Kofi I because you're Friday Kofi. born. Yes. And then. And then Gan. I, I was worried about Gan because I know you are ever. I thought it was Ghana, which means four o'clock. <laughs> Actually, you're right. It is Ghana means four o'clock, but it is not Ghana. It's not Ghana. No. So it's Gin. It's, it's Gan. I prefer to pronounce it Gan. But where is it from? It's from the. It's a little. Town, former coffee growing town in the Petwe, Hoffe, little tiny place called okay. Avejolo. Avejolo. Yeah. I see. How are people of Avejolo receiving news that one of their <laughs> children want to be president? Well, um, I mean, a few people from there have heard. Uh, it's not a little, it's not a big village. It's a very, very tiny farming, farming place okay. uh, where my father is from. Um, I think it is more people in Keta who have heard because I grew up largely in Keta, okay. uh, lived with my grandparents in Keta, did everything in Keta, went to Keta Secondary School. So Keta is more the place where people would have you know, heard about what I'm doing rather than you know, a virtual, even though we've got a few posters up there now. I see. Let's speak to people of Keta now. Nke Jafin Ejibi as the president today. Adoli le miyao. Adokai 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 le uh, Balang Moso Stronko, Mogava Trozu, Abe Alena Strong, I Doji, I would do, mm -hmm. Tona, Akboji, and Mogava Lemon and Amon. The Ungadel, you love me, I trust you, let me up, Balang Strong Yama. Your error is good, by the way. Gaka Vogbato drew a Diagi Poi up at twenty. Blave. Tangi Jaffi made a queen of a lemon and a mark a care Vuvoto Lemon. Vuvututu nye ba jidula o nye mi yo yon fi ba fagba toa. Nye ma jim nye ble ba nye fagba toa yi ta ma u do nyo. Asa kuma. So jama no le. Ok. Su swaro o kwa klo we. Nye ha fi ama u do le e chia, e jijia. Nye po do o a shi trotro re le un. E nye ba yo nye dema ma va garo fi ya. U pa klo dema wa po va yi ya. Odo kama. Okay. Okay. Ta a a anya mwe ke masa samba nengi soja manola afiva trozu dupo la ola ba deo na wala development nyama utu vuvu vuvu gana lo duma. Let's come back from Western Togoland. We 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 just went briefly to visit the forgive me what's the name of the old man? I can't remember. Yeah. Let's come back. Why do you want to be president? Omaro, because if, if, and this is not just about me, uh, let, me, let me make that very clear. This is not about me. This is, uh, I just represent a lot of Ghanaians who want to see something different happen. Because if, if we don't move away from where things are, if we leave things unchecked the way they are, uh, we're going to continue having young people who are not uh, being groomed to be in line with where the future is heading. We're going to have businesses that are going to face vindictiveness every time there's a change of government. We're going to have rural people who, uh, whose life is going to be very far apart from you and me who live in Accra or Kumasi. And there's going to be this huge gap between uh, uh, those in the rural and those in the, uh, mm. in the southern blocks. Um, and if we don't change this, uh, old people are going to grow up, go on pension and feel like they are a burden on society because, you know, we're not structured to look after them properly. So okay. there's a whole lot of things that if we don't uh, do anything about where things are currently, our economy is, 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 is failing, mm. really. And so if we don't do anything about this, uh, we're going to go back to almost uh, what we started 27 years ago. I will ask you to expand more on these things, but mm. let's get to know you. So who are you? I'm Kofi Gan. Um, I grew up in Keta. I was born in Keta, Jelukopa uh, Hospital. Uh, so I grew up in Keta. I grew up with my grandparents. Uh, so I grew up with uh, my grandparents as a fisherman. And my grandmother was selling You were going foes. fishing? Yeah. Well, I still in fish. the sea or in the river? In the, no, in the sea and the lagoon. Okay. Um, the Keta Lagoon. The Keta Lagoon. Okay. I still fish. You um, know how to cast a net? Oh, which one of the nets are you talking about? There's the about one? five different nets. Okay, the, I think it's seen net. That sabu mm. is the one you throw. Okay, you, you, okay. Know, you know how to sabu. You know, yes, you I, know still, how to I, still, I still, I still throw sabu. You can fix the metals at the tip yeah. of it. Zugu, but yeah, yeah so you know that one. Yes. And when it gets stuck 
in the water, you're yeah. able to dive and go and retrieve it. I still swim. You can swim into yes. the and, and, and by the way, the lagoon is not as deep as the the sea. Okay, and they are, even though it's the same sabu, it's got a different structure the one we use in the sea and the one we use in the lagoon. I see. So yeah. you're able to do that. You've done yeah. that before. I've done that. And before. then you catch fish. Yes. And you know you either catch fish with a net or uh, what is it called a hook? No hook. You just catch one fish per at hour a time. Or no, you actually can catch two at a time. It depends on how <laughs> how 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 smart we've become innovative in the way we design hooks. So you have two two so hooks. So we at have the, one line, nylon line, and hooks. then at the end we have two. Actually, you can even have more hooks on the line. Mm. You don't you don't have to yeah. just have two. You can have more on the line. I've seen that. Yeah. And then you have to put more. Do you put worms? You put a, a they call it indefinite or something like that. Uh, yeah, we call it vocally. Okay, so that's what you put at the yes. tip. You either use worms or. Uh, there's a special way we cook banku so it doesn't dissolve in the water. So you put it there to yeah. bait them, and yeah. then they come in and then yeah. eat. So you catch fish, and then you do what we did when you were growing up. Um, you either sell them, uh, usually you tend to divide them. There's one that goes to the house, that's customary. Some has to go home, and then the rest you sell. You, so you helped your grandfather on a large-scale business, or you're doing your own thing no, we, as a well, child? So my, my grandfather had a couple of nets. So people would come the previous day and rent out the nets mm -hmm. to the lagoon, okay. uh, go and lay them out. Uh, and then in the mornings, uh, they either sell and bring a portion of the feed to him, or they bring him a portion of the fish for him himself to sell. So you, ha you can paddle the canoe? Oh, yeah. I see. Uh, we don't paddle. We use the longer you, the bamboo out, stick. Okay, the longer yeah. one. It's still paddling. Uh, except uh, that you don't use an outboard motor. We don't use an outboard motor. You use an outboard motor if the lagoon, uh, sorry, if the uh, boat is moving from Keta towards our flower area. Not because of technological no, because advancement. Of Maybe now you have more outboard um, motors. If you go to Keta and are people still use the bamboo stick? Okay, for just the 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 people who do the fishing closer yeah. to the shore. Yeah. I see. Yeah. What else have you done? I've sold foes. Okay, in the Fos, Keta market. In, uh, uh, okay, yeah. where? In the Keta market, I my grandma, I still remember my grandma's uh, stall right in the Keta market, uh, close to the lagoon side of the market. It's quite a big market, uh, but it's, it's all waste now. It's, it's How do you sell it? Do you carry it on your head? Or uh, your no. Head? So you all have stalls, and then you, uh, you go in there, you separate the uh, T-shirts from the uh, John Greens, we used to call mm -hmm. them back then, and then the jeans and, and all those. Uh, and then each of them has prices and... Uh, you know, uh, you just sit there and wait. If customers come, if you see people passing, you you call them in to come and buy. And all, all Which that. year are we talking about this business you're doing? Oh, we're talking about in the uh, late uh, 70s, early 80s. Okay. Yeah. So you're way over 40 years old. I'm about, I'm 46 years old. You're 46 yeah. years old. There are a number of requirements. Uh, so you have to be Ghanaian. Are you Ghanaian? Yeah, I am very Ghanaian. You are 40 plus? Yes. Are you saying? I'm... You should answer that question. That's, the, that's, that's, that's what the constitution <laughs> Am says. Am I saying? I'm just putting the question. Do you believe I'm saying? I don't know. How do you test it? Because the constitution <laughs> says you have to be of sound I mind. I am saying as far as I'm concerned. sound mind. I'm sound mind. Uh, what other criteria is there? Um, you, you need to... to um, say again? You have to be a voter, I think. Yes, you have to be a voter, a which I am, voter? I am a qualified voter. You voted voter. before? Yes, I have. How many times? I've voted on every occasion since 2012. Oh, okay. Yeah. 2012. That's just yeah. two elections. Yeah. Uh, where have you been before then? Um... It, it's one of those things where you've never really taken an interest. In some of the cases, I think we were living in Nigeria uh, when, you know, Jerry's first election happened. Uh, we were living in Nigeria. 92. Yeah. Um, so we were, it, it wasn't that we were living in Nigeria. We had come back, but my dad, we were still shuttling between Nigeria and Ghana. So there were days that... Were, so dad was doing business in Nigeria? My dad is a building technologist, mm -hmm. uh, and he gets bored easily, so he travels quite a bit around. <laughs> and uh, you were following him? Yes, being the first boy. So you we were in kids. Liberia, we were in Nigeria, and a few other places. Yeah, we're four kids, two men, two, two women. But you are the first. I'm the first son. So you were almost the there guy. two girls before me. Oh, so two you were, women before me. So you were his uh, walking stick wherever <laughs> he went, he, went <laughs> you, he took you. You could say I was his companion. 2000, where were you? 2000, I was still in Ghana. I was... Uh, you didn't register to vote. No, um, I think it was one of those... You were more than 18 years old. Yes, I was more than 20. Why didn't you uh, register? Um... <laughs> I think it was one of those things where you, as a young person, you really didn't see what you were getting out of, of, out of the process um, until subsequently when you started forming your, your mental view politically uh, and then you started getting a bit more interested. And plus, you know, after, after 2000, early 2000, I traveled to the UK 
um, uh, before I traveled, I just became a chartered accountant, worked here for a good number of years, I think four or five years, uh, doing some big audits and some a lot of traveling acts across the country. On hindsight, do you regret that you didn't register to vote in 2000? You know, I think I voted in the years that I was uh, politically ready to make a choice that I felt would make political impact. The privilege says if you're more than 18 years, mm. you should register and vote. Yes, if you don't that, take that, part that, is in, what the, that is what the requirements say, or that is what the... the it's a privilege, it's almost. A privilege. It's, not, it's not an yeah, instruction. It's not an instruction. Yeah. But you see, I, I, I don't think people should just vote because they should vote. No, they're not voting just because right. they're voting. They're voting because they believe in the idea right. so to them. And they but vote. you need to form your political mind to determine whether, why you're... You need to convince yourself why you're voting. You think 18 is too early for... I don't think it's too early. So why didn't you register? I just think vote? that, you know, everybody has a different political orientation. I know, um, but... In my you're... family, we never talked much about politics. So it was, it was largely... Everybody for himself. So the first time you registered to vote was in 2012. That was when you the hit The first 40. time I actually voted as an adult. It was in 2012. Yeah. yeah. So that was after you hit 40. So in essence, if you come on the ballot, mm -hmm. only people who are older than 40 should be thinking of voting for you. Why is that? Based on your own... No. Pro great progress. No, in, I am a election. different human being. I took yeah, but a if different... everybody who is supposed uh, no, to vote for you... I took a different like timeline to get to that... Uh, uh, willingness to apply my political consciousness to voting. Everybody has had different reasons. Some people, even even though they are 18 years or even though they are 40 years today, still vote lightly because that is the that is the pattern their their family has always voted. That is what you know their town has always voted. Uh, and I, I don't feel that is independence of thought. Yeah, but you could have voted for independent candidate. You could even have voted for your parliamentary candidate or yeah. independent I, MP. I, I, think, I think the point I'm trying to make, Omaro, is that for you to determine whether to even vote for an independent candidate or to the MPP or for the NDC, um, you need some level of political consciousness. Yeah, and my point I, is that... I did not want to vote simply because... I have heard everybody saying this about MPP or everybody saying this about You could scrutinize this. You are a NBC. chartered accountant. You could scrutinize yeah. it and check whether yeah. what they are saying was worth your votes or not. You are not just going to vote. You are not going to follow the wind. You are privileged mm. to have voted. Mm. The fisherman in the Keta Lagoon mm. who has not gone to school voted mm. anyway. Uh, they chose a president they, and you a parliamentarian you, you don't for know, you. You don't know why they voted where they voted. There's a principle that says if you do not vote, mm. uh, fools may vote for you and f elect Agreed. fools who govern you. Agreed. But it is also foolishness to vote simply because you've been given an opportunity to vote without determining uh, why you are making that choice. Because look, after you vote, it doesn't end at voting. Mm. After you voted, you do have to justify to yourself whether what you are getting is what you bargained for. How do you convince those who, how do you convince people to vote for you when you yourself have not voted for several successive elections? Uh, Umaro, this, this is, look, we're voting now in December. Mm -hmm. I am a registered voter. I will vote. I voted in 2016. Who did you I vote voted. for in 2012? <laughs> I voted for actually the NDC. And in 2016? I voted for the MPP. So you, you, you tested yes. both? And well, you I wasn't testing. You see, that's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. It wasn't testing. At that point, I felt, you know, my vote was being cast for what I thought uh, was the best choice to be made at that time, in that season, with what I was hearing and uh, what I could, you know, understand for myself, not being told. Uh, and so these are very critical things. I, I just don't think people should vote simply because they've been given the opportunity to vote. Yes, it's necessary, but I think we should bring a lot more consciousness to the voting process. So that this whole thing of uh, we've always voted this tradition, even though it's not going well for all of us, then people just follow and say, well, because it's tradition, we have to continue voting along those lines. Why did you think that the NDC ought to continue in 2012? Well... It's not a matter of continuing. Uh, at that point, it was some of the things that were happening. Uh, I felt that, you know, they presented a better case for moving the country forward. 
Um, at that point, yes, I had quite a bit of understanding of how development economies and all the rest work. I thought they were touting a more infrastructural agenda, uh, which I felt at that time was, was critically needed. And so, yes, I, I voted. How about in 2016? Why did you decide in 2016, enough was enough? Let the NDC go home. Well, in 2016, here's the interesting thing that happened. The NDC was still infrastructurally minded. And I felt now was the time to get a lot more, you know, expand the economy. Uh, and this whole thing we do where every government wants to expand the economy by just investing in infrastructure. You know, there are other areas, and I thought that's where they got it wrong for me. Because if you notice, in the last quarter of, of 2016, it was just, you know, every money was just going after infrastructure. And, and so you, you were having an economic bulge in that very latter stage. Even though it was election period, you were mm. not going to see any fundamental productivity in that period. And so for me, that was a decision I had to make. So you chose Nana Kufado. Yes, Four I years did. on. Are you disappointed? Very. Why? <laughs> because what we thought was going to happen did not happen. We thought the economy was going to be expansive. It hasn't expanded. Uh, and this is not to do with coronavirus. What indicators were you expecting, or well, were, are you basing on your, your argument? Look, I was having a discussion with somebody the other day, and they were saying, oh, it's coronavirus, that is why the economy hasn't expired. And I said, no, let's not, let's not go down that road. Uh, in 2019, for example, um, we were rating, I think, about $53 billion in terms of revenue. Um, 33.01 billion of that was used to pay debt. We have accumulated so much debt that pretty much more than half of what we were raking in as, as income was going to pay debt. The other, you know, 22.22 billion was used to pay, you know, uh, uh, public salaries. So we were having a bulge in the public sector um, uh, and we were also paying a lot on debt. So if you just look at then this is just a domestic side of things. If you look at that, there was no way the economy was going to expand. There was, there was no way we were going to make any progress. Um, we were still borrowing to buy our own cocoa. Um, and there were so many others. You know, uh, what is it called? We, we talked about planting for food and jobs. And yet, if you look at the contribution of our Greek to our economy today, it slipped down to about 18%. Mm. You know, so there were, there were so many things that we can talk about. But the NDP uh, argues that it has done better. The NDC... In what way? See, I like this whole thing where people can say we have done better. But it's, it's, it's best if we back those things with the numbers. The numbers are not speaking to we have done better. Hmm. You know, I've, I've just given an example of how... Are you interested how, in mm. making a judgment on the comparison of the two parties or you do not want to? I think them? that's a job Ghanaians have to do. Okay. Okay, you've given up on bo both of them? They've had 27 years to make an impact. Mm. They have not. And we can say so much about this 27 years. I, I was talking to another colleague who is one of our key people with, with health, on health. And we were looking at the numbers. Average, we spent about what? Uh, between $1.7 and $2 billion every year on health. Mm. For the last 27 years, <laughs> I, I was even saying to him, look, if you look at the figures for, say, 22,000. We had an average life expectancy of about 57 years. Uh, uh, Rwanda, and we've been told not to use Rwanda, but Rwanda had an average life expectancy of about 40 something, uh, 47. There was about 10 years gap. Today, Rwanda has an average life expectancy of almost 70. Mm. 